We'll talk about two different types of flow rates. The first is the volume flow rate. And I'll use the variable Q to, refer to refer to that. And it can be in units of things like liter per, liters per minute, which we also talk about as LPM, maybe cubic meters per second, or CFS is cubic feet per second, or maybe we'll see SCFM, which is standard cubic feet per minute. And that would be in contrast with ACFM, where A stands for the actual cubic feet per minute. And this depends on whether we're reporting the volume under actual conditions or whether we're converting them to standard conditions, standard temperature and pressure. Now, if I have a pipe, and let's say I'm looking at a certain spot on that pipe, watching right there, and I have flow going through this pipe. And then let's look at the volume of fluid that's passing through this pipe. So we'll look at, um, we'll call this cross-sectional area A, and we'll look at this volume here. And as the fluid's moving, this whole kind of slug of fluid uh, moves to the right. And we're going to call this the velocity, u. And then we have a, which is the cross-sectional area. We can see then that the volume flow rate is Q is equal to U times A. And if we look at the units of that, this will make some more sense. Q is a volume flow rate, so it's cubic meters per second. U is a velocity, so it's in meters per second. A is our area, which is in meters squared. So you can see the units work out. Another way to think about this is that, well, if I look at this slug of fluid and I want to know how much go, goes by in one second, um, I can see how far it goes in one second, and that would give me some distance along the pipe. And that multiplied by the cross-sectional area then is the volume. And if I put that over time, then we're looking at a volume flow rate, and that distance per time is a velocity. Now, the other type the other type of flow rate that we talk about is the mass flow rate. And we could call that dmdt or m dot. And that is in units of grams per second or maybe milligrams per minute, maybe kilograms per hour. If we think about our pipe with the flow going through it and our imaginary volume, control volume here, we have flow. Now we talked about the volume flow rate of how much volume of this fluid flows past a point at any given time. If we know the concentration of stuff in that volume, the mass per volume, we can then figure out the mass flow rate. And so m dot is equal to the volume flow rate times the concentration. And you can, I think this is most easily illustrated by looking at the units where the mass flow rate is grams per second, the volume flow rate is so many cubic meters per second, and the concentration is a mass concentration, so it's grams per cubic meter. You can see the cubic meters cancel out and you're left with grams per second. Flow rates can be reported in either standard or actual conditions. This is because the volume of gas depends on the temperature and pressure. So let's say that we are combining two flows, one with a flow rate of Q1 at some temperature T1 and some pressure P1. And then we also have another flow at flow rate Q2 at some other temperature T2 and some other pressure P2. 
we combine these and we want to know what is the total flow rate q sub t and let's say that we want to know that at standard conditions standard temperature and pressure so here's where this is a control volume where things are combining now let's focus on the volume in q which is a flow rate in volume per unit time. So the question is, what would the volume be at standard temperature and pressure? STP. Keep in mind that we can use the fact that moles are conserved. The number of molecules in the gas. Then we can take the ideal gas law and rearrange it. The ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. So I'm going to solve for N. So the number of moles is equal to the pressure times the volume over R times T. And the number of moles under actual conditions has to be equal to the number of moles under standard conditions. All that changes is the pressure and the volume. So we can write this as the pressure under actual conditions times the volume under actual conditions over R times the temperature under actual conditions is equal to the pressure under standard conditions times the volume under standard conditions over R, because R doesn't depend on the conditions, times the temperature at standard conditions. And so now if I solve, we can now rearrange this equation to solve for V at STP which is equal to V sub A, the actual volume, times P sub A over P sub STP times T sub STP over T sub A. This is in terms of volumes. We actually want to get back to flow rates. So if you think of volume per time, imagine we divide both sides by time, then our Vs become Qs, and we have Q at standard temperature and pressure is equal to Q sub A at actual conditions times P sub A over P sub STP times T sub STP over T sub A. Now temperature at standard conditions for this purposes of this class and in many environmental engineering classes is 25 degrees Celsius which is 298 Kelvin or 77 degrees Fahrenheit which is 537 degrees ranking, which is the absolute temperature scale in, in Fahrenheit increments. And then the pressure at standard conditions is 101,325 Pascals or one atmosphere or 14.7 PSI or 760 tor, which is a unit used more by chemists, but also some meteorologists where it's millimeters of mercury. In this problem, we'll use the idea of the mass flow rate to estimate, to calculate an emission rate from an engine. Uh, this engine releases carbon monoxide in its exhaust pipe. The concentration of carbon monoxide in the exhaust is 200 ppm and the temperature of that exhaust is 80 degrees Celsius and the pressure is one atmosphere. The exhaust duct is four centimeters in diameter and the average gas velocity is 0 0.5 meters per second. So we have an exhaust duct. We have a velocity of 0 0.5 meters per second. This has a diameter of four centimeters. So first, let's calculate the volume flow rate. Uh, 
we know that Q is equal to U, the velocity, times A, the cross-sectional area. In this pipe, or duct, we'll assume it's circular, and that the cross-sectional area is out of a circle, and the area of that circle is pi r squared, or, in terms of diameter, pi over 4 times the diameter squared. So now we can make go ahead and substitute our numbers. We have 0 0.5 meters per second for u, and then we have pi over 4 times the diameter, which is 4 centimeters. I'm going to convert that to meters, so we divide by 100 centimeters per meter, and all of that is squared. That gives me a volume flow rate of 6.28 times 10 to the minus 4 cubic meters per second. Now, this is going to be at actual conditions because the average gas velocity was given to us. Uh, we'll assume that that's at actual conditions. Next, we need to calculate the emission rate, which is really a mass flow rate. Our emission rate, E, is equal to m dot, which is equal to the volume flow rate Q times the concentration C. Our concentration is given to us in parts per million, so we're going to need to convert that 200 parts per million to a mass concentration. So we can use the equation, the concentration is equal, mass concentration is equal to the volume concentration Y times the molecular weight times P over RT. We start with a concentration of 200 parts per million, which I can immediately write as 200 times 10 to the minus 6 it's cubic meters of carbon monoxide per cubic meter of air times the molecular weight of carbon monoxide, which is 28 grams per mole, times the pressure, which in this system is one atmosphere, divided by R, 82.05, times 10 to the minus 6 cubic meters atmospheres per mole Kelvin, times the temperature, which is 80 degrees Celsius or 353 Kelvin. This is equal to 0 0.193 grams per cubic meter. Now I can substitute this into my equation for the emission rate. E is equal to Q times C. Q we figured out in the previous step, it's 6.28 times 10 to the minus 4 cubic meters per second, and C is 0 0.193 grams per cubic meter. Finally, that gives me 1.21 times 10 to the minus 4 grams of carbon monoxide per second.